myself gravitating towards the out-of-conference games. Um, naturally, I mean, Georgia and Notre Dame is one that I'm really excited about. Uh, Clemson, Texas A&M, one I'm really excited about. LSU, Texas, uh, another game I'm pretty fired up to, to watch. And, and another one that's way off the radar is South Carolina, North Carolina. Cause I, I like South Carolina this year. And Mac Brown's back. And, you know, that team that everyone's always said has had potential in North Carolina, they just haven't really been able to sustain any level of consistency. So, you know, the season in general, there's always so many great games throughout the league. There's always so many great matchups, rivalries, traditions, what have you. Um, this year's no different. What I would say this year, though, is that the league is stronger today than I can remember it being in quite some time, so particularly on the eastern side. I would say that every single one of those teams would – you could make an argument have a chance to be better this year. The one people that the one that people would say, well, I don't, not so fast, would be Kentucky. But when you really look at how Kentucky has recruited and the guys that have departed the program and Benny Snell, Josh Allen, all those great players in the secondary, yeah, they're gone and they're going to miss them for sure. But the way Stoops has recruited, there are highly regarded players, more highly regarded players that are actually taking their place. So I'm not saying that they're going to replace that productivity, but um, I have a lot of reason for optimism. Ten wins, I don't know if they're going to get there, but it might be because that side of the league is just so much stronger. So uh, it might be the first time, too, going into the season where you can make a case, guys, the East is stronger than the West I mean, in some ways. Maybe they don't have as many championship contenders because we all feel so strongly about Georgia. But I would say one through seven, you can make a case that it's better than all seven teams or better than the one through seven the collection of those teams in the West. Greg, you did the G-Day game at George. You had a chance to get a close look. You know Kirby Smart pretty well. Now they've since lost to J.J. Holloman. What are your thoughts on Georgia coming out of the G-Day and now that they've lost this personnel going into the season? I'm not – I'm just – with all due respect to the wide receiver position, I, I think you can find productivity there. Um, I'm encouraged by what Demetrius Robinson might become. I'm, I think Simmons has a chance. Uh, I know they like some of the young guys that are coming up, Matt Landers in particular. Uh, couple of that with the fact that the running game is going to be remarkably strong and they have the best offensive line in college football. Um, I love Georgia this year. I, I really do. The one thing I want to see is I want to see that havoc rate that Kirby Smart so often talks about. You can't consider yourself an elite defensive unit and be 11th in the league in sacks. So I, I want to see those numbers go up, and they have the personnel to do it. It's just seeing the guys that have talent that haven't yet reached that ceiling has been a little bit frustrating at times, but hopefully this year the light will go on for a couple of those guys in the trenches, and maybe a freshman will step up that, that we're excited about in Smith. And uh, I'd, I'd be absolutely shocked if Georgia's not in the college football playoff conversation come December.